Good day. Today I'm going to show you how to install WebODM onto Windows 11 Home. You can open your Chrome tab and then we can search WebODM online. Um, you can go into the WebODM folder and you'll uh, be prompted to go to the official website. You can see on this icon you can select download but this takes you to a pre-installed package that you can download but that you need to pay for. We're not going to follow this route. We are going to do the manual installation and you can find the guide here in documentation, official documentation page and then we can go into the installation and getting started. Okay, so that also uh, recommend in this section to rather do use the installation package but I think of this tutorial it's going to be very easy for you to install web ODM on your um, on your laptop or on your desktop and yeah it's actually a very powerful and stable software and the installation is complex but the software is very easy to use after first installing it okay here's the bare minimum uh, computer or hardware requirements and you can go check if you meet the minimum requirements in your system uh, going to start and going to, into system but um, presuming you're, you're using Windows 11 you will definitely um, have better hard, hardware specs than this okay in the section below they show to you, um, the amount of images you can process with the relevant or corresponding uh, RAM installed into your laptop. In my experience, with eight gigabytes of RAM, I could install or I can process 90 photos um, at the time. But this 90 photos you can combine again in uh, software like QGIS afterwards. So in terms of that, you don't necessarily need such as powerful um, laptop to install um, the software. So our first step is to go into Task Manager to see whether, and again to Performance, to see whether visualization is enabled. If visualization is not enabled, you will have to go into your boot menu to change that. Um, you can see here they specify the different um, buttons that need to be pressed after just restarting your laptop to go into the boot menu and then probably you'll need to watch a video on how to, um, how to enable visualization from the boot menu uh, before continuing. Okay, after completing or enabling a virtualization, we can go into the installation of uh, Python so there's two methods um, to installing this. You can go to the official website or you can install it from your Microsoft store. I'm going to show how to install it from the official website because I think uh, this is the more, more complicated one. And yeah, you can just select the stable version, then the Windows 10 or Windows installer, uh, the 64-bit one. Okay. And then you'll see the uh, download, download will start. Okay, so after the download uh, is complete, you can just double click on the executable. And it's important to add Python exe to path. This will allow us um, to use it in, uh, in command prompt and in power systems. Okay, now we can go into the installation guide and when 
In this section, we will vary from the official installation guide. Uh, they recommend for our version to install Docker Toolbox. And if you have the professional version, you can install Docker uh, for Windows. But since this um, guide was written, Docker did create a Docker desktop, which you can use on our version. Um, so yeah, we're gonna follow that route. Uh, and you can just uh, type in install docker to and yeah if you click on this it will take you to this page uh, uh, docs docker.com forward slash desktop install windows and then you can just select or press this icon and uh, Docker Desktop will start downloading. Okay, uh, so because I already have a Docker on my laptop, I'm just gonna run the installer executable. And yeah, you would just double click on the e exe on the bottom left um, corner and then the installation process will start. Okay, select okay and the installation of Docker uh, takes about three to four minutes on my computer, and yeah. After the installation is completed, we can go into the Microsoft uh, documentation that will take you uh, to this page that will explain how to install or enable the VLS2 installation command. And the easiest way is to run uh, Windows PowerShell as an administrator and then to install VLS um, uh, with this command. There's also a manual in installation, so if this step doesn't work, you can read through the manual installation for older versions, but it also works for newer versions. So you can search Windows PowerShell, right click and say run as administrator, then we can just copy this command and you can right click and it will show you the command okay now um i already have the um vls2 information installed um and you'll see it gives you this prompt after installing it just to show you um, on what subsystems um, it works and is available ubuntu uh, can be downloaded from the Microsoft um, Microsoft Store, and I think that's also one of the easier versions, uh, easier methods to download it. You can also download the Ubuntu um, terminal from the official website. Uh, I just found that this was an easier method. Okay. So I normally install the most recent version of Ubuntu and yeah, you can just click, click install and after the installation is complete, we can open Ubuntu and the first time we open it, it's going to take a few minutes just, um, yeah, just to, uh, get started. Uh, then you can just enter your name and select a password. Okay, uh, after this, we need to go into um, Docker and just allow access or um, resource access to uh, the Ubuntu terminal. And uh, the first time you're going to start, uh, and ask you to accept the terms and conditions. You can skip here. We can go into settings. Um, this might take a while. It's just waiting for Docker to start before we can change any settings. If you have a, pr a problem of connecting at this stage, um, previously in the video, I spoke about uh, enabling the VLS uh, 2 um, a software uh, so that you can use Docker. And yeah, if Docker doesn't want to connect, um, I would suggest to uh, 
look at the manual installation of the VLS2 uh, subsystem. Okay, so now we'll allow Ubuntu, uh, now we'll allow integration uh, with an additional distro, and then we can say apply and restart. Okay, uh, before we continue, um, I think you need to restart your computer uh, for the change to take effect. Okay. After restarting my computer, um, I saw that Docker um, indicated that the VLS kernel also needed uh, to be updated, and then it prompts you to go to this web website. And when you do that, they actually take you to the manual installation. So apparently, this is a requirement. Um, for you to use uh, the Linux kernel and then there's an update package that usually takes a few minutes to download and after installing that and following step five um, yeah everything should be in order to um, continue um, downloading uh, on the uh, web ODE okay so the download is complete and now we can start the installation process. Next. Okay. The next step is to use um, in Windows Power Systems, our Power uh, Windows PowerShell to run it as administrator and to set the VSL to second version as default. Okay. Now we can go and open Ubuntu again. And we can follow the prompts set out um, for Ubuntu or Debian. Okay. So sudo just means um, apt update is just to update uh, the Ubuntu, and uh, sudo just gives you access to do that. That's why they also ask for your password that you created earlier. Okay. And we can start to and to the next process, we can copy this command. Okay, so if you already have Docker installed, I think it's better to then not install it, so it recognizes the, the Docker, the Docker is already installed on Windows. Um, so yeah, then you can just reverse this process. Um, after which we can do sudo apt install um, git python file. Now we can start the process of downloading web ODE. Okay, that's 
Dalton, Sam, uh, we're better. This might take a while. Okay, um, so I ran into a bit of trouble um, downloading um, Docker, but I think it's a good practice to know what happens when, what to do when um, you, your connection is interrupted whilst downloading. You can see I tried to um, copy the same instruction in again a few times, and then I had to go search on the internet what to do. Um, yeah, just to remove that directory, we'll go to in folder. So you press list or ls, and it will give you the list of folders that you have in your um, desk build. And then you can try to remove it. There's a certain function you need to use rm um, space minus r if web ODM, and then it removes the uh, folder that didn't completely download but yeah luckily the second time I downloaded um, it completely downloaded so then we can go to the next command and this is CD web ODM and this just takes us into the web ODM folder so that's the same as double clicking on a folder um, on software that has a graphical interface like uh, Windows And then if all no, um, the process didn't complete um, when I tried to download it, it said Docker was starting, then make sure there's no issue. Um, that, so the only thing I forgot to do is you need to open Docker to ensure that it uh, can run and con can follow the process in the um, good to software. So then when you dot forward slash web ODM, dot sh start and then you'll see um, uh, this prompt for me and yeah then docker will start to run and start to download i just check the list here so in this step just check the list to see um, if that wasn't a possible issue but yeah then i'll start to download it will likely take about half an hour and then, yeah, after that, um, you'll see this long list and a congratulations. And then you can click on this if you're in, uh, depending on what Windows you are. But you can just copy the HTTP uh, forward slash localhost 8000. Or you can actually go onto the their website. Um, I think um, they also show this link. So it can just be copied um, uh, from the um, installation guide. Let's see if you copy this, copy and you paste it into new link. You'll have a graphical interface uh, for web ODM. They'll say congratulations and then you can uh, create a account and yeah, from this you can see it's, it's pretty straightforward from here. Um, yeah, and very self-explanatory. I'll make a follow-up video on how to use WebODM.